son of Ola. 132. Edelkron. It's working. <laughs> Shit. Sometimes lucky. Solar guitar. AC6. Raw. Raw. After this Ola, I'm not... I'm not actually sure if I have this guitar or not, because it might get sold at NAMM. And, you know, this Sunday with all as recorded before NAMM. So it's a little bit weird. On this Sunday, maybe I, I don't have this guitar anymore. That's a little scary. That's a scary thought. How long is this intro, by the way? Maybe here, yeah. What's up everyone and welcome to Sunday with Ola 132. Welcome! Hope you guys are doing good. I'm currently in Los Angeles right now. And it's Luisa's birthday, so we're probably, you know... Where are we? I, I just had a member meetup in uh, Anaheim and now I'm sitting here in the premiere. It's 11 p.m. for me, but it's 8 a.m. for Central European time. Very confusing, holy shit. What's on the agenda for today in regards to Luisa's birthday? Uh, we're still gonna be in Los Angeles, so we have a day off where me and Luisa are gonna check into a, a, a romantic hotel and we're gonna eat some good food and maybe go to the beach, maybe do a little... Uh, Oh, nay. Uh, let's talk about something else. What are we talking about? Yes, subscribers! Did you remember? Uh, do you remember? One million? It's not going that fast, guys. So I would appreciate if you guys could, you know, make your moms, your sisters and your brothers subscribe to my channel. You know, it's not gonna help me and my content that, you know, people that won't watch me are subscribing, but, you know, maybe if you're not subscribed already, but you're watching this, maybe it's time to subscribe, okay? I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Dan News! The thing about NAM happening this past week is that, you know, I recorded my Swola before actually traveling to NAM. So, uh, and a lot of shit happens at NAM. I go there with an empty mind and then, you know, I will find news and shit that I will eventually post on this channel, obviously, or Old England channel number two. But the thing is that all these news that I will present to you today, uh, it's probably really old news. So, uh, you're, we're just gonna jump into it, okay, and then you can watch the other segments where, you know, I have news from Nam or something like that. How about that? Deal? Yes, handshake. First piece of news, Motley Crue lawsuit. Boy, oh boy, I love lawsuits. Mick Mars announced that he would uh, retire from touring altogether, and, uh, you know, Motley Crue were quick to announce uh, John Five as being a replacement guitarist for, for a tour. All was good, I thought, you know. I understand Mick Mars, he has health problems, you know, he wants to relax a little bit. That, that, that's what happens when you get old, you retire. Apparently, that wasn't the full story. As I'm reading it right here, in the lawsuit, Mars alleges that after he announced his retirement, the band moved to remove him as a significant stakeholder in crew corporation and business holdings through a shareholders meeting and through lawyers instructed him to sign a severance agreement that would divest him of his 25% take, because they're four piece, you know, 25% math genius, old England. In the band's various business interests in return for a 5% stake in the band's 2023 tour, a stake that would be reduced to 0% for subsequent tours. Since he will get 5% by still do, you know, not touring, but the tour will still happen, and then he will get 0% for sub 
Sequin tours. That, that, that makes a little bit of sense, right? He's not actually touring. He's still making money off the tours, though. Probably for merch and, you know, all that. Whatever. Uh, he got it up to 7.5%, but he still refused to sign the papers. And now uh, they're being sued. Also, Mars accused the rest of the band uh, of miming some, or in six case, all of their parts during Crew's 2022 stadium tour with Def Leppard, Poison and Joan Jett and the Black Heart. Uh, that sucks. <laughs> Motley Crew's response to Mick Mars' lawsuit, retiring from touring is resigning from the band. And I agree, like if the band uh, had plans to continue tour, then someone wants to retire, I mean, they have to be replaced. That, that makes sense, right? However, in my humble opinion, wasn't Metal Crew supposed to stop touring years ago when they did their final tour? I don't know. It's a lawsuit. It's juicy. Excellent. I love juiciness, you know? Morbid Angel Steve Tucker is saying a lot of things. He's saying music these days doesn't seem to have a very high value to a lot of people. Huh. Well, except the death metal fans. So basically what Steve Tucker has realized is that it seems that, uh, to me that times are changing, dude. The way an album is done and the things like that may change. I don't know uh, that in the next 10 years people will still be going in and doing 10 songs album. I think we're gonna see EPs and singles and things like... Okay, so basically he's saying exactly what everyone has been saying for the past 10 years. He's just saying it a little bit later. <laughs> Music these days doesn't seem to have a very high value to a lot of people, although people are constantly walking around with headphones in their ears, wanting to be entertained. They just don't want to exert any effort themselves to get it or spend any money to get it these days. Luckily, with Death Metal, a lot of fans want the product. They want that product, dude. They want the CD. They want to hold it in their hands. And uh, they want the vinyl. I actually have a cassette of Morbidian's latest record, Kingdom Disdain. I think it's badass. It's really a shame that this format went away because it, this looks fantastic, you know. So basically he's saying also what I've been saying is that metal fans are still clinging on to, you know, CDs and vinyls. And, you know, I'm a fan of vinyls and the album format myself. But the thing is that the generations are shifting and, you know, these old metal fans, they, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna move on eventually. And by move on, I mean die. <laughs> and, and, you know, the new generation of young people that are used to, you know, Spotify and, you know, music on demand, stuff like, will take over. So it's basically inevitable that we're running into this. Will we see a renaissance when it comes to albums and vinyls and stuff like that? Absolutely. It's already happening. People are buying vinyls, but it's never going to be the same as back in the day, man. You know, Spotify is here to stay. Uh, then eventually, maybe the format will change into something else. It sucks. For me as a fan of a full album and CD and vinyl, it sucks to see. But, you know, I'm doing my part by releasing my shit on, on, on physical media because, you know, it's important to me. And I know it's important for people to have something and hold something and, you know, claim ownage of, you know, something with music on it. Because that's the problem with Spotify. You don't own the shit anymore. It's, about, it's the same with games. You don't own the games anymore if you buy them digitally, you know? That's why I still buy physical copies because I, I like knowing that, you know, I own this game, I played it. It's good, but now I want to sell it if I if I have to. I mean, I can't sell a digitally downloaded game. So, uh, yes, I agree with Steve Tucker. He was maybe a little bit late on that comment, but uh, still a good, valid comment. Quick news. Max Cavalera names his favorite Sepultura song. Scroll. Arise. Obviously. F***ing hell. Probably one of my favorite songs as well. Uh, Beneath the Remains is up there as well. Holy shit, man. Dude, I like Sepultura nowadays, but Beneath the Remains and the Right Sepultura, oh my god. Well, what was I about to say? I, like, Death Mel, best Death... Best... Best Death Mel right there. Fucking making a Caesar salad right there. You know? All right, I'm gonna bring in a couple of small little Nam news, even though uh, I haven't been to Nam yet but I will have been when this Swola airs. You know, the Spark Go. That's pretty cool. It's a small little, you know, the Spark amplifier that was already pretty small. It's even smaller now with a small little speaker. Will it sound good through these small little speakers right there? That's what I have to find out at NAMM, okay? I'm gonna do that, hopefully. And maybe I can do some Pantera tones. I'll try my Pantera tones on this thing, okay? So that's cool. Also, ESP sent out an email showing what they're gonna show at NAMM because ESP are gonna be at NAMM. But not Fender, not Gibson, not all the big brands. They don't give a shit about NAMM anymore. NAMM is dead. 
Okay. The body ESP is there, and you know, Soul Like Guitars is gonna be there. Uh, or was there, because this was happening this past week. Holy shit! ESP E2 series, look at this. We're proud of announcing two well, new additions to our Japan built ESP series with the models in, uh, in the Arrow Eclipse on the Viper games. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. That looks good. I like this. The M2, man. White. Fishman pickups. Okay, holy shit. And then we have the LTD series. They have this Camo Eclipse. That's kind of cool. I like this. What, what pickup? Oh, those are also Fishman pickups. Holy shit. Everyone's marrying Fishman right now. Signature series. We'll be debuting the new signature series for month. Used to be new, new guitars updated for uh, James Hatfield, Bill Kellier, Gary Holt, Javier Revi Erase, uh, Lars Fredrickson of Rancid, Nurgle, and Steven Carpenter. Okay, so a bunch of new signature LTD models. That's cool. Do we have any more? Uh, no, uh, no, that was it. That was the NAM news. For you right there. I, I mean, when I'm recording, I haven't been to them. So, so you know, cut me some slack. All right, last but not least for the news, I figured we would check out an old classic by Andy Riefeld or Riefeld, uh, the guy who's amazing when it comes to uh, his own renditions of uh, Cannibal Corp songs and shit like that. This is Domination, Pantera. Let's listen. This is called Domination. I love Pantera, man. Beautiful Bossa Nova version. Fucking A! <laughs> it's good, man. It's good. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Andy Raffelt, everyone. I urge you to go follow him. And that, my friends, was the news. That was short. What is this? It's a pet, lots of vinyls. Uh, vinyls? All right, so we just received the Chug Project vinyls. Holy shit, and the CDs, holy shit. So I'm gonna get a knife. You know, I haven't even seen the test printing of these, so. Okay, I'm, I'm a, little, a little nervous. Oh, damn, these are heavy, man. Why are they heavy? Oh, it's because it's vinyl, okay. Okay, yeah, 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 I'm excited. Excited, oh, holy shit. What? Take a look. Is there any light somewhere where I can see this properly? What? That looks sick. The truck project, baby. Holy shit. Okay. All right. Ooh, the black sleeve right there. Very nice. Then. Bing bong, clear vinyl. Look at that. How cool is that? Damn, son. Damn, holy shit. Look at that. That's the CD right there, the Digipack. Damn, man, that looks great. There it is. Take a look at that. I'm so happy that they're finally here, man. And now that these have arrived, we can finally start packing and ship out all of the orders or the pre-orders that have been made. So, you know, well before April 30th. So that makes me insanely happy. We have the vinyls, we have the CDs, we have the packing stuff, we have the autograph cards, the uh, tab books, and then there's uh, stickers and other things. And t-shirts, obviously, that Alan is in there printing right now. So yeah, we're finally gonna pack all of this up and start shipping them out to people who have pre-ordered. This makes me extremely excited. And guys, thank you so much for all the support. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. And here they are. Look at this. Right there. Oh, what, which camera? Right there. Look at that. It turned out so well, and I'm so excited that these are, are finally here because that means that I can ship out, or we can... <laughs> me. I'm sorry. The team will start shipping out 
uh, this coming week. So I'm extremely excited about that. Uh, the album is out on Spotify and on uh, you know streaming medias April 30th. But we can you know start shipping out uh, to uh, the people who pre-ordered right now. So thank you so much for all the support. If you haven't pre-ordered any of this yet, you can do so from oldenglandshop.com. I'll put a link up there. Okay, thank you so much. And did you see this vinyl is clear? Oh, look at that. You can see me through there. Oh, yeah. All right, album tips. This album hasn't dropped yet. It will drop May 12th, but I'm extremely excited for the new Cal Decapitation album. They released a couple of singles from the new album, and dude, I'm really, really liking what I'm hearing so far. It's incredibly awesome sounding. Upcoming album is called Terracide. It's out May 12th through Metal Blade Records. I mean, listen to this. Who mixed this? Dave Otero. Okay, obviously, that's why it sounds like amazing. And the video is really cool. You know, we're gonna see a lot of like AI generated uh, videos from now on, I think. And I think that like the middle section where they're not playing, that's that's AI generated and just stacked images, much like the periphery video. This album, I'm really looking forward to it. You should be looking forward to it too. All right. I'm about to go check out Meshuggah, Halo Effect, Orbit Culture, Scar Symmetry. I got a photo pass. I figured I will film a little bit for my YouTube channel. It could be fun. So, yeah. There it is. Holy shit face, man. Meshuggah. 
always deliver the goods, man. Holy shit. Obviously, you know, I can't use any of the concert audio uh, in uh, my videos or, you know, the professionally uh, filmed videos because, uh, you know, that's a waiver I have to deal with when I film or have a video pass with, uh, with bands. So, you know, I have to put on some other music. So, I'm sorry, you can't hear Meshuggah during th those beautiful that beautiful imagery of Meshuggah and Halo Effect right there. But Meshuggah and Halo Effect were amazing. If you get a chance to watch Meshuggah, go do so. They're just... They're just over here. While everyone else is here like f***ing rocking it out and it's being really good, Meshuggah just steps everything up just a notch and they... They're just amazing live. Holy shit. Hi, I'm Ola and today I'm trying out the Fretzy lot. All right, it's the new segment where I sit and shame myself for not uh, demoing stuff that got sent to me a long time ago. And this particular package right here from Sealot Interactive. I've had this package since July last year. Whoops. I mean, that's why I have this segment right here, just to bring in all this extra stuff that I haven't demoed into the Sun with Ola. I will make a quick demo. Usually when we get stuff like this, it starts with a brand sending an email to me and Luis responds to him. Uh, she's basically saying Ola doesn't do, you know, biased demos. He just makes everything uh, in the way he sees fits. And uh, you have to be ready. He's going to say whatever, <laughs> you know, on camera. If it's a bad product, it's going to suck. Are you sure you still want to send me the product? And that's where we are today. I feel particularly ashamed about this one because they have been waiting since July. Check what's in the box. Paper. Oh, oh, hello. What? Okay. All right, here is the fret sealer right there. It's basically a lead system that you put on your fretboard and it shows you where to play, basically. So it's for education. Uh, it says learn guitar with light. You should be able to learn songs and learn scales and chords and shit like that using this LED system on your guitar. All right, so now I need to find a guitar to fit this uh, fret seal on. Oh, so let's go. Funny thing, since they shipped this out to me last summer, they figured out, oh, Ola needs a pair of glasses. But, uh, you know, that's a year ago. <laughs> Hell, I suck. I can't wait to learn some guitar, to be honest. Let's test the fitting. I guess this is the first fret, or how does it work? I have to say, it's they're not very beautiful, but I guess you can't really, you know, do anything about that. It, it's not the absolute easiest in the world, but a little bit easy. Bend the spine. You guys see that? I'm bending the spine. Can't say it's the most beautiful thing I've seen in the world with this on it right there. But uh, yeah, good enough. Ola, England, the Swede. All right, so we have the battery right there. And then you connect this little, this little asshole of a cable. Holy shit. Look how messy is this setup, by the way. Holy shit, Ola, England. I need to, uh, I would love to have a better space for this but this is this is just how it is okay let me remove the block we're bringing this guitar into the room all right okay what do we have we'll have the best guitar cable in the world i'm ready to shred man i'm ready to shred so you need to download an app fret seal app some notifications off i hate that choosing the level it's asking no experience beginner intermediate advanced guitar catch fire when i play i'll, I'll pick intermediate i can do bar chords and some riffs free c log connected that we're pretty pretty flawless actually so right now it says success but i haven't even started playing guitar yet okay so very cool you can go and pick different songs you want to learn I want to learn Alice in Chains, man. Song is in a different tuning. AMO will not work uh, correctly well, unless retune. Okay, so already at this point, I'm I'm uh, I'm dead. Okay, here we go. Look at this. In the tools section, this is what I wanted. I wanted to be able to pick chords, notes, and scales, tuner, and all that. Oh, so so right here, 
you have the colors of the fingers. You have blue, you have green, you have yellow, and then uh, pink. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, maybe that's what you need the glasses for. The, the LEDs are so bright. Holy shit. So it basically shows you know, the best guitar cable in the world was not plugged in. Okay, so here we have a C. Very cool, it's showing. Don't play on these frets or on this strings at all, just this. I've learned the C, everyone. Holy shit. Uh, C minor. Oh, hello. Look at this. What? Oh, that's so sad. So as I'm changing the chord right here, you can see it changes on the fret seal out as well. Show me what to do. Right now, a D major ninth with an added seven. Or it shouldn't be the other way around. It's a uh, D major seven with uh, added nine. Uh That chord was out of tune. How cool is that? I want to learn some scales. Light show? Holy shit, take a look at that. That's uh, like on my new computer. Okay, bolt. <gasps> what? Sparkler. Oh, dude, what? Tractor beam. This is just for effect. So I guess if people want to have something cool when they're playing live and you know, it, it looks really cool. But I mean, who's gonna play with this thing live? You have the whole battery thing here and it looks looks a little stupid. Right now I loaded up uh, just a drone C note and I'm gonna try out a couple of different C scales. So you have the notes that you can play basically. So you have... So basically you see exactly where you're not supposed to play. So I'm not supposed to play here. But I sort of think that was cool. But that's a different type of scale. So let's change the scale. Okay, can you hear this? I was basically just trying to look and uh, play the frets that are being lighted up right here, so... Uh, that's a pretty cool thing. Uh... They have Pantera, hello! A new level, let's go. Okay. Oh no. They put it in drop D, that's wrong! A new level is not in drop. <laughs> Amateurs, man. Whoever made that, shame on you. That's a heavy guitar sound right there. But look, it's actually showing where to play. Okay, okay, okay. What I really like about this is probably the notes and the scales part of the app because uh, basically it could help you write some solos if you're not, you know, really into theory and shit. So, all right, I have to find out how much is this thing? And it's like, is it worth getting? It's 199 US dollars. I don't know, is that a good price or not? I actually don't think it is a bad idea to have a system like this on the guitar. It would be cool to have a guitar that had it built in already, other than this, because this, uh, even though I don't really feel it when I'm playing the on the frets, I do feel it on the thumb with the spine right here, which is a little bit annoying. I mean, I wouldn't sit and play this like, okay, I'm gonna shred out right now and write a solo. However, you know, I would probably use this uh, to find out what notes to play when I'm doing a solo. So in that sense, it could be a little bit helpful probably. I would imagine the direct competitor to this and to learn guitar is just actually getting a book or getting something like Rocksmith to play, you know, your favorite songs and stuff like that, just to keep it fun playing. Because I mean, reading a book and applying it might not be the, be the most exciting approach of learning guitar today. This makes it a little bit more fun, I guess. But uh, you also have this, it's not very beautiful. 
and it's 200 bucks. It is absolutely a little bit helpful. Is it something you need? That's up for you to decide. I don't think I need it. You know, I'm such a professional guitar player. For, I don't think I need something like this. I already know the notes, you know? The notes are on there. So you just have to find it. You know? <laughs> no, but there you go. That's the fret seal lock for you right there. You know, hope you enjoyed this short little testing unboxing thing. All right, friends, family. Fucking hell, I lost a subscriber. <laughs> no, please, if you want to support, please subscribe to my, my channel, please. That will make me very happy. Also, remember to pre-order the Trug Project. It's out April 30th. The Trug Project is basically a compilation of uh, some of my uh, Swola things that I write for. You know, the intros of the songs for The Sun with Ola, but made into full songs. And it's the first volume one right there. And uh, the idea is to continuously, you know, release uh, different volumes of, uh, of music like this. They're just riffing out. You know, basically almost no solos, just riffs, man. Just, you know, fisting riffs. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, oldanglandshop.com. Guys, I hope you have a great Sunday. And uh, the live stream won't happen tomorrow, the Sunday with Ola Contender live stream. It will probably happen on Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, we just have to see if uh, everything goes well when I travel home from Anaheim and uh, Nam. Uh, but it will happen probably on Wednesday. I'm probably going to be jet lagged to shit. But uh, pay attention, stay tuned. It's happening on Old England channel number two, okay? Thank you so much for tuning in. Mwah. I love you guys. Have a great Sunday. Goodbye. <laughs>